wrong, buddy. Run, run, run! Come on, let's go. Get loud. Get loud. Ready? One. Two. Yeah. Huh? Let's go. Press it! Folding laundry time. No more need for the laundry mat. It's beautiful, beautiful. So I'm sitting here folding it while listening to a classic creepy pasta. Shout out to uh, Creep to Make Pasta, by the way, guys. One of my favorite channels for creepy pastas. They're basically like horror stories that you just listen to. And Creep to Make Pasta is awesome because one, his narration is amazing. It might be that brilliant accent of his. Two, the stories he reads are always really high quality. And three, he's actually replied to multiple of my comments and even commented on my channel. And I was a little bit giddy like a schoolgirl because, again, I'm a big fan of his channel. So check out Creeps McPasta on YouTube. Guarantee you'll love it. Check out the story, The Skinwalker, by him. And then also check out uh, Fenter Woods by Mr. Creepypasta. That's the other guy I like. Those two stories are crazy. Anyway, finishing laundry, got to desperately clean the new house, I mean, do dishes anyway, because Bob Arcand is going to be coming through that door in a couple of hours, Olympus Iron, to collaborate, and to officially christen the new home gym. Yeah. I mean, I've technically already christened it, but, you know, this is like the first time having a training partner in there, which would be pretty dope. So please, like this video for peace and prosperity. Subscribe now and get ready. The God among men has arrived. Walking godlier than ever among the sands of the arenas. AKA my lawn. He knocks. I came to do two things today. Chew sugar-free gum and get fucking swole. <laughs> and I'm all out of sugar-free gum. <laughs> Bob, we got a game changer here. Listen. Changing the trend so of YouTube. Someone came around not too long ago and brought an energy drink on the, on the market for YouTube Fitness. And I'm just taking that and pulling a Nick Wright and changing the game. <laughs> Boom! Rockstar. With the new white rock stars. Boom. Still white, but more rock star-ish. So that's the new game changer, guys. Rockstar, if you want to be dope like us. If you want to lift big, Rockstar. If you want to look like Max Tuning, Monster. Is that the zero calories, though? Yes, sir. You know yeah. it. That know stuff's that? bomb to mix with booze. <laughs> it's looking nice. It's so good. So, I finally bit the bullet. Bob, you'll appreciate this. Even though I've made fun of you millions of times for it, I've been trying to use uh, my Olympic shoes on benching. And um, I can't say I noticed a tremendous difference. But, yes, yes. <laughs> but, I mean, they feel good, though. I hit that 355 PR in my, in my Olympic shoes. Proud of you, by the way. Thank you, thank you. So, I mean, I don't know. I was benching, you know, uh... 315 for like four reps without them. So I, again, I don't think it makes a huge difference, but they do allow you to kind of drive a little bit. One thing I need to work on personally with my bench press is really incorporating a lot of lower body leg drive. Um, my upper body strength is growing pretty good and I can brace myself pretty well with my legs, but I've noticed that in my bench pressing, there's like very minimal leg activation going on there. And like that leg drive is so important to get in the elite level. So. There we go. It works, it works. I gotta set this up somewhere fancy, but look at this. So, this bench has like a 400 pound max on it, I realize. I'm gonna get something to support it. I'm gonna say fuck it and just still try lifting with it today. Don't tax me when the music play! But uh, we're gonna bench and see how it goes. Also, we're not gonna use this bar. This is good for squatting, but I don't like the neural for benching, so we're gonna grab that bar right now. It's okay guys, we may shift a little safety thing here. I managed to wedge my uh, dehumidifier under it. I slid two five pound plates in there to really wedge it in good. So we should be cooking with gas now. But anyway, we have a little safety fail safe there. I'm in natural competition. And the funniest thing is that they'll, uh, they'll talk to me and, we, and I just was like, hey, we're gonna have fun on stage, we're gonna have a good time. It's like, it's not like it's a competition. I'm, it's like more about me beating myself, me being, you know, 
Yeah, yeah and as, as, as corny and cliche as that sounds, like that is really what well, you... Because that when I competed in bodybuilding, that's when I loved it most, and I was competing for myself. I loved it. As soon as I got onto YouTube and started making it bigger, or whatever, and everybody started getting all caught up in like who's beating who and this and that, and obviously drugs started sliding in there, it became so much less fun. Like I, I lost the actual drive to like do well just for myself, and I started focusing so much more on like the politics and the winning and beating everybody. People are like, oh, you're good. Oh, you're gonna be number one. You're gonna be number one. I'm like, I really don't care because there's like really good physiques up there. I'm not even nervous because I'm not really competing against him, I'm just going to try to do the best I can because nothing I can do about my physique. I can just diet as hard as I can and do the cardio and put in the work. There's no way I can change my physique. Exactly, yep. Come on, Nick. How many weeks out are you, Bob? I am 7.5 at this point. Seven and a half weeks out. Seven and a half weeks out, man. Still training like a god. Still training like a god. The biggest thing I actually found, though, is I definitely had, like, not actual narcissistic this personality, sort of, like, legitimate narcissisticness, but I definitely had, like, this, this dead set, like, ego on how I was and, like, how great I should be, this and that. Which is good and bad. It's good because it's actually what drove me to jump on stage way before I was ready to jump on stage. It's what drove me to make the YouTube videos, just basically plunge right into my goal. I think if I had had like a very realistic vision of how I really was back then, I would have held myself back. I wouldn't have gone on stage. I'm not ready yet, this and that. But that, that part of my brain allowed me to pursue that and, and make the splash. At the same time, I'm also very competitive. It might have just been more competitive nature than narcissism, but whatever it was, I was very competitive. So like I didn't like losing, and I didn't like being proven wrong, I didn't like being told no. Well, that's kind of like a good thing, though. Know? It's good and bad, but then it got to the point where like I wouldn't listen to criticism. I wasn't, oh, like if I achieved something, I'd be like, all right, I achieved this. I don't need like your advice. Don't, don't tell me this and that. Like it get in the way of myself. Yeah, but you realize that now, which obviously yeah. makes you obviously makes it better. It's like you you realize you realize what your faults were, so yeah. therefore you've grown. That just proves it. So yeah, it, good and bad. Like it, it did get me started, but now that I'm actually here. I'm sometimes sometimes <laughs> blind confidence gets you gets you where you need to It can kickstart it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it can, can kickstart it. But that, I think that's what's the biggest thing. By switching to powerlifting, there's nothing else to compete in. I wasn't known for winning any shows, or there was nothing to compete against. Like, I wasn't stronger than anybody. My baby, I'm a noob, so. There you go, there you go. the footage and like the reason why I was like trying to get under him at first is because literally you see him like tip. <laughs> I'm more impressed that he like ca he came back from that and like straightened out and was able to actually lock out which is like <laughs> incredible. Like, it, it's more of a grinder. It was in person on video. It looks better than it actually like I thought because I was behind you. Oh man after all the failed attempts at 365 I knew where my sticking point was. I knew 
Like all those other times, I, there was a sticking point I had, like right about here, where if I don't make it past there, I fail. But I knew, even though it was ugly, I, I, I don't know if I'm double jointed. I have something with this shoulder where I can like pop it out and like make it longer than this one. I don't know if that's double jointed or what. But because of that, I think, I think it leaks power on this side. That's why my weak bench is only just kind of dip on this side. Regardless, I made it past the sticking point, and I knew I did, so I knew I had it. And then uh, I think it became more grinders once I started talking, but I still I went yeah. up. <laughs> dude, I, I, put, I like put my hands under it, didn't touch it, and then you said, don't touch it. And then I was just like, whatever, dude. He's going to do whatever he needs to do. And then you got it, man. You got it. All right, I knew I made it past the sticking point. Sick. <laughs> Thank Sick. You. Nice, dude. Long time coming. So it's ugly, but it's progress. No lie. The slingshot. This is not a plug for a slingshot either because I'm not paid by them. I don't, I'm not sponsored or affiliated. This is a generous gift from them, but I've been buying their stuff, so it's gonna be a plug. But this is a big thing that I think is helping my bench up to 365 in the last couple of weeks, just because I've been using it to overload myself every single workout. You can use it no matter if you're in a heavy day or a light day. And it really, really just helps you adapt and overload and get, get acclimated to heavier weight. So like, it's, a, it's an awesome thing, dude. Like honestly, you're, you're super comfortable for 315 and over now. When, oh yeah. Like, I can tell you were uncomfortable before. Yeah. 315, ready? Let's do a little lift off. Yep. Yes, sir. All right. One, two, five. Yep. Reps. Five at least, motherfucker. Five at least. Come on, another one. So you're going to have to go to Bob Arcan, aka Olympus Irons channel in the info box below to watch the rest of this footage, but he got the rest of the workout in here, which was actually a really intense workout. So we did bent over barbell rows with some good old weight for some good old reps. I actually taught Bob Arcan how to do the floor pressing, and he got it down pretty good for never having done it, especially being seven and a half weeks out from a bodybuilding show. So we did some floor pressing. I discussed how I'm ready to move up in weight in the floor pressing as well for that lockout strength. And then we even did uh, some close grip bench pressing to really nail those triceps. So, as usual, please like this video for peace and prosperity. Subscribe now, comment below, and I love you. Peace.